But we didn't want to judge. We rejected Yahweh for being our king and decided we wanted a flesh the man set over us as king. And Yahweh warned us about those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like he told the prophet Samuel, he said, do what they say do. He said, because it's not you that they're rejecting. It's me that they're rejecting. Mm-hmm. Um, but and, and when we read these things, let us, let us understand what it was that caused our people to fall. Because if we understand what it was that caused our people to fall, then truly we, uh, we put ourselves in a position to where we know better and won't make the same mistakes that our fathers uh, made. But Brother Steve, read the oracles of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may continue to read out of this legacy left us by our fathers and consider what we read, because regardless to what we think or regardless to how we feel, Yahweh is in control. Yeah. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the anointed one's sake, have forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be one's name among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Amen. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and holy convention. I'd like to start our class today in 2 Samuel chapter 5. Now, we read up to the death of Saul, mm-hmm. and we knew about what Saul was all about. Mm-hmm. And we read up to his death, and now that he has died, another king had to sit on Yahweh's earthly throne here on this earth. See, mm-hmm. Yahweh didn't sit on his throne. Yahweh sat on his throne in heaven. The Messiah doesn't even sit on Yahweh's throne. The Messiah sits on the throne of David. Mm-hmm. So what he did was he created because man wanted it that way, he created an earthly throne for, uh, 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 for man to sit on to rule over his people, Israel. But let's pick this up at 2 Samuel chapter 5, and Brother Steve, read verse 1 through verse 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5, and verse 1 through verse 5. Verse 1. 
Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were he that led out and brought in Israel. And Yahweh said, uh, said to you, You shall feed my people Israel, and you shall be a captain over Israel. And not one time during the whole reign of Saul did Dawid try to usurp mm -hmm. the throne. He knew he could have. The people had a song they sang. David killed, um, Saul killed his thousands, and David killed his tens of thousands. But when that Amalekite came and lied to David and told David, say, well, uh, he was wounded and he was going to die, and he told me to do this, and I killed him. He lied about it, right? Mm -hmm. David asked him, say, you mean to tell me that you weren't afraid to lift up your hands against the Lord's anointing? Kill him. You see, and even David wouldn't do that simply because he knew that Saul, that Saul was chosen by Yahweh to do this job. And he, David knew that what his job was. His job was to bring peace to the land of Israel. That's why he stayed out of the city. He, he fought all the time. There was a reason why it was a problem between Saul and David. See, David was a better general than Saul was. And David was the one that went around really that was uh, 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 destroying all of the people that our people had left in the land. See, Yahweh told them when they came in there, kill them all off. They took the best of the women, the best of the men, and so forth, and it became a snare to the people. So David went around uh, uh, to secure the land from the river Nile to the great river Euphrates, our inheritance, to secure that to the people of Israel. Why? Because that was God's holy land. It's the heart of the earth, and it's where Yahweh chose to dwell. Uh, 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 go ahead and read, uh, Steve. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. Now, he didn't say the young folks came. Because, mm -hmm. see, we got a good example. We're going to get a good example of that, what happens when young folks are in power. Mm -hmm. see. Uh, go ahead and read, brother. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before Yahweh, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Yehuda seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Yehuda. Chapter 7 and verse 1 through verse 29. <coughs> now, we know they made David king, right? Okay, let's pick this uh, up later on in David's, uh, uh, David's reign. Go ahead and read, bro. And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house, and Yahweh had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of Elohim dwelleth within curtain. Now we see why Yahweh loved David so much, didn't he? David cared about Israel, and David wanted to build Yahweh a place of habitation right among his people. Mm -hmm. You see, Go ahead and read, brother. Verse... Three, and Nathan said to the king, go do all that is in your heart, for Yahweh is with you. Hmm. And it came to pass that night that the word of Yahweh came unto Nathan, saying, go and tell my servant David, thus says Yahweh, shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? You going to build me a house? You mean to tell me you going to build me a house? As bloody as you are, you going to build me a house? Well, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 6, whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build you not me a house he, of Satan? He, he said, Did I go to any of the leaders? Out of all the places y'all dwell, have I went to any of the leaders of this people here and say, y'all build me a house? Go ahead, bro. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 8. Now, therefore, so shall you say unto my servant David, thus says Yahweh of hosts, I took you from the sheep coat, 
from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And guess what? Dawid never forgot that. He never forgot where Yahweh had brought him from. Go ahead, brother. Verse See, nine. that's why when his old nasty brother tried to uh, 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 kill him off and run him out of the city, uh, his son, rather, that's why he didn't kill the boy. David could have killed him. Even when Joab rebelled against David and did things David uh, 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 didn't want done, David knew that Joab wasn't worth a quarter. Mm-hmm. See, he knew that Joab wasn't worth a quarter, but Joab was the gift that Yahweh had gave, the ruthless gift that Yahweh had gave him to bring peace of, you know, among Israel because Joab was a mighty general. Mm-hmm. And we know it. Uh, now go ahead and read, brother. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 9. And I was with you whithersoever you went and have cut off all your enemies out of your sight and have made you a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Mm-hmm. Moreover, I will upon a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time, and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, Yahweh tell of you that he will make you a house. Now, verse 10, he said, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and plant them that they should dwell, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them as uh, anymore as before time. So David knew that this was going to be for a great while to come. He knew that this wasn't going to be tomorrow. You see, because Israel was already in the land, right? Well, what did he mean by, I will appoint a place for my people Israel? It's the same thing in Genesis 15. He told them, say, but but in the fourth generation, the children of Israel shall come here again because the iniquity of the Amorites have not been full, fulfilled, right? Abraham, I mean, uh, Israel wasn't even a nation, hadn't been even created as a nation. So what did he mean they're going to come here again? See, so it let us know that Israel will be put out of the land twice, you see. But the last time they will return, that they would be rulers of the earth and no one will afflict them anymore. And let me tell y'all something. After being afflicted by Yahweh since 606 B.C., it's about time. But see, it's the nature of our people that caused all of that. Yahweh didn't have anything to do with that. He had to go along with what he went along with simply because our people made Yahweh serve him with their sin simply because he had to fulfill the covenants that he made with Abraham. He killed off Jake from one end of the land to the other whenever he felt like it. But guess what? Guess what? It was always a remnant. And that remnant was the one that, 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 uh, that kept in God's eyesight while they was in the land. And it's the same thing when you're out of the land. It's the remnant. Those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life for certain specific duties. You know them by their fruits. Uh, 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 go ahead and read, Steve. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. And when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. You see what Yahweh said? Yahweh said, this son I'm going to give you, David. If he's, he's talking about the Messiah. Mm-hmm. He said, if he sins, I'm going to chasten him with the rod of the stripes of men. I don't care whether you sin or not. I'm not going to take my glory from you. See, Yahweh had already set things in place. But you know who rebelled against all of this? The people did. Mm-hmm. See, go ahead and read. So elder. They didn't think that Yahweh knew what was best for them. So, Elder, if the provisions were given the son to sin, and we know he didn't, and the father gave him provision, it was provision that if he did, he did sin, he was going to be chastised, right? Did.
Now, I was just asking if it was provisions made in this in these verses for the uh, son of David. If he's saying he was going to be chastened with the rod of men and with the stripes of children of men, therefore we shouldn't even try to even judge judge each other about sins, right? You see what? What, did, what was our instructions? Judge not that you be not judged. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what judgment you meet, it's going to be meted to you again. Right. See? So he told you, don't judge. Let Yahweh judge. You see, because he's going to judge righteously. We're going to judge according to our own personal likes and dislikes and our own personal feelings. And that's what's caused our people problem from the time that our nation was created until uh, 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 we go back into the land. So go ahead and read, brother. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in and sat before Yahweh, and he said, Who am I, O Adonai Elohim, hmm. and what is my house that you have brought me hither to? Mm -hmm. And this was yet a small thing in your sight, O Adonai Elohim. But you have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the man of man, O Adonai Elohim? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Adonai Elohim, knoweth thy servant. Praise you. For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, have you done all these great things to make your servant know them. Praise you. Wherefore, thou art great, O Yahweh Elohim, for there is none like you, neither is there any Elohim beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Mm -hmm. And what one nation in the earth is like that people, even like Yisrael, whom Elohim went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for your land before your people, which you redeemed to you from Egypt, from the nations, and their Elohims. For you have confirmed to yourself your people Israel to be a people unto you forever. And you, Yahweh, are become their Elohim. And now, Yahweh Elohim, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. See, this is why when you read in the New Testament, this is why the Messiah said, I'm not sent but to the lost mm -hmm. sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. But see, when you go to church, they skip all through that. Mm -hmm. See, this is why the Messiah himself said, you don't know what you worship. Mm -hmm. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews, right? Mm -hmm. Check this out. 90% of, 90 of this congregation was Christians before they heard the word of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Solomon's throne wasn't established forever. No, it's Solomon's throne. Uh, Yahweh went to Solomon twice. Mm -hmm. Talked to Solomon twice. And Solomon turned his back on Yahweh. You know why? He had to. It was already in the plans of things. See, the kingdom had to be, the kingdom had to be divided at some time. And he picked Solomon's kingdom to divide it in. But it wasn't talking about, uh, this is why he said, you speak of your servant's house for a great while to come. He knew it wasn't going to be apparently. He knew that this thing, he was going to be way on down the line that this house was going to establish, to be established. But go ahead and uh, 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 read, uh, Steve. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 26. <clears throat> And let your name be magnified forever, saying, Yahweh of hosts is the Elohim over Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For thou, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, have revealed to your servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Therefore have thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Adonai Elohim, you are the Elohim, and your words be true, and you have promised this goodness unto your servant. Therefore, now let it please you to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before you.
For thou, O Adonai Elohim, have spoken it, and with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Amen and amen. Now, not only was our father, uh, uh, fathers Yahweh chosen people as, as, as promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now the tribes and families that would produce the holy seed was made manifest. We was promised the holy seed in the garden uh, 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 when, when Lucifer was talked to, and he said, I'm going to put an adversary between your seed and the woman's seed. You shall bruise his heel, and he shall bruise your head. So we know that we had to have someone that would have the, the power of the true and living God in order to uh, uh, wound uh, uh, Satan, who was at one time one of the most powerful angels that had been created. Uh, 1 Kings 1 and verse 1 through chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Kings 1 and verse 1 through chapter 2 and verse 12. Possibly be uh, inferred that it was talking about. Well, when it's talking about uh, wounding the head of Satan, it was talking about Satan itself and everything that pertained to the unrighteousness that Satan had brought upon the earth. He's the head of it. He's so the father could, of the lie. So it was talking right, right. So it included not only uh, 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 the Christian Church; it included all the other pagan religions on the earth, all the people up on the earth, including his people. Israel. You see, Israel had to get it first, you see, simply because we're Yahweh's chosen people. And when you go back in our history, you'll find out that this so called Negro here in America has suffered at the hands of Yahweh more than any other people mm. on the mm. face of the earth. Why? Because we his chosen and he's determined that we are gonna do what he wants done. This is why he chose servants of his choosing that's going to take care of his business on him. In all adversity, they're going to take care of his business on him. You and know, now in, in school, they don't want us to mention anything, make any reference that has a religious overtone. And I asked the principal, I said, uh, two or three years ago, y'all heard you, you held your uh, promotional exercise in a Christian church. And I said, we, including my elder priest, was greatly offended and could not attend. Mm -hmm. I said, will you continue to hold Promotional exercise in Christian church. He tried to deny that he even held it there. Brother, I went. I know it. I know it. Brother, let me tell you something. <coughs> the people that's over our people that has authority mm -hmm. that don't know nothing about the truth, brother, they are out to follow orders. That's all they do is follow orders, and they will not do anything that's going to jeopardize their position in those church in, in those schools. When the orders come down, they're going to follow. It's just that simple. And here's the country. Uh, here's the country that said uh, 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 that uh, uh, does uh, uh, the pledge of allegiance. And then when they get to writing their constitutions and everything, they mention the words God in there. Now they want to take it off. Well, oh, why yeah. don't you take it off their money? They want to take it out. That's right. <laughs> why don't you take it off their money? <laughs> if you want to keep God in the church, then uh, we should have rulers as atheists. Mm. Because they go to church and then they come in and they put in their views and so forth. But then when it comes down to running the country, whatever their religious views are, they don't want to deal with that. We got a country. We got to separate church from state. How can you separate church from state? Who went to David? The prophet of the Lord, right? How can you separate church from state? It's Yahweh that sets up everything. And the way he did it was through service that he called. Nobody just walked in and say, well, I'm going to assume this office. See, Yahweh sent spirits to talk, sent holy people to talk to them and say, look, you go tell my servant so-and-so, such and such and such thing. This is why I always tell folks, brothers, say, look, who talked to you? Well, ain't nobody talked to you, me, but you, you, you might need to try to get you some instructions. Yeah. Uh, 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 go ahead and uh, read, Steve. <coughs> First Kings chapter 1, verse 1. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Mm -hmm. Wherefore his servant said unto him, 
Let there be sought for my Adonai, the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom that my Adonai, the king, may get heat. Mm -hmm. So they sought for a fair dancer throughout all the coast of Israel, and found Abishag a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The same woman that one of his nasty sons tried to get uh, uh, people to give him to s try to secure him in the kingdom because she was uh, uh, David's servant. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 4. And the dancer was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Then Adoniah, the son of Haggith, Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. Mm -hmm. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why have you done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. Mm -hmm. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruah, and with Abathar. Abathar the priest, and they following Adonijah helped him. Why? Because Dawid just then got old and he can't do, he can't get around and do what they want him to do. But one thing about it, he was still king in Israel, you see. But you see what happened? His own sons tried to usurp that throne, see. And then got the high priest, got one of the priests in there with him to help him. Got the man's general to help him, right? Let's see what's happening. Go ahead, bro. Verse 8. But Zodok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zoheleth, which is by Enrogel, and called all his brethren the king's sons, and all of the men of Yehuda the king servant. Hmm. But Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah and the mighty men, and Slomo his brother, he called not. Hmm. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba the mother of Slomo, saying, Have you not heard that Adoniah the son of Haggith does reign, and David our Adonai knoweth it not? Now therefore come, let me, I pray you, give you counsel, that you may save your own life, and the life of your son Solomon. Mm -hmm. Go and get you in unto King David, and say unto him, Did not you, my Adonai, O king, swear unto your husband, saying, Your handmaid. Your handmaid, I'm sorry. Saying, Sure, assuredly, Slomo, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then does Adonai reign? Hmm. Behold, while you yet talk there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag, Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What would have thou? And she said unto him, My Adonai. Thou swearest by Yahweh your Elohim unto your handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Slomo your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonai reigneth, and now, my Adonai the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called all the sons of the king, and Abathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host, but slow mo thy servant, have he not called? Right. Then he knew the hoodlums to call to him. Yeah. <coughs> Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> Verse 20. And thou, my Adonai, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon you, that you should tell them who shall sit on the throne of my Adonai, the king, after him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my Adonai, the king, shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Slomo shall be counted offenders. Mm -hmm. And lo, while she yet talked with him with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. 
And Nathan said, My Adonai, O king, have you said, Adonai shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he has gone down this day, and have slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called all the king's sons and the captains of the host, and Abiathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, saying, Elohim saved king Adonai. But me, even me your servant, and Zodok the priest, and ben the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Slomo, have he not called? Is this thing done by my Adonai the king, and you have not showed it unto your servant, who should sit on the throne of my Adonai the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As Yahweh liveth, that have redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto you by Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Assuredly, slow more your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead, even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth, and did reverence to the king, and said, Let my Adonai the king, let my Adonai king David live forever. And King David said, Call me Zodok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Adonai, and call Slomo my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Jihon. And let Zodok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over all Israel. And blow you with the trumpet and say, Elohim saved King Slomo. Then you shall come up after him that he may come and sit upon my throne. For he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Yehudah. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. Yahweh Elohim of my Adonai the king say so too. As Yahweh have been with my Adonai the king, even so be he with slow-mo, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Adonai, King David. So Zodok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites and the Pelethites went down, and called Slomo to ride upon King David mule, and brought him to Jihon. And Zodok the priest took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle, and anointed Slomo, and they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Elohim saved King Slomo. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. And Adonai and all the guests that were with him heard it as they made an end of eating. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? Mm -hmm. And while he yet spake, behold, your Nathan the son of Abatha the priest came, and Adonai said unto him, Come in, for you are a valiant man, and bring of good tidings. Mm. And your Nathan answered and said to Adonai, Verily our Adonai king David have made slow-mo king. And the king have sent with him Zodok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites, and the Pelethites, and they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule. And Zodok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, have anointed him king in Jihon, and they are come up from this rejoicing, so that the city rang again. This is the noise that you have heard, and also Slomo sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. And moreover, the king's servant came to bless our Adonai, King David, saying, Elohim, make the name of Slomo better than your name, and make his throne greater than your throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. And also thus says the king, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel, which have given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. And all the guests that were with Adonai were afraid and rose up and went every man his way. And Adonai feared because of Slomo and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told Slomo saying, Behold, Adonai feareth King Slomo. 
For lo, he have caught hold on the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Slomo swear unto me today, today that he will not slay his servant with the sword. Hmm. And Slomo said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not a hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Slomo went, and they brought him down from the, verse 53. So King Slomo sent, and they brought him down from the altar, and he came and bowed himself to King Slomo, and Slomo said unto him, Go to your house. He should have killed him right then. He should have killed him right then. If he would have did it then, he wouldn't have to worry about it later on. See? Go ahead and read, brother. First Kings chapter 2, verse 1. Now the days of David drew near that he should die. And he charged Slomo his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be you strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. And keep the charge of Yahweh your Elohim to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moshe, that you may prosper in all that you do, and whithersoever you turn yourself, that Yahweh may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If your children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, that shall not fail you, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you know also what Joab the son of Zeruah did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, unto Abner the son of Ner, and unto Amazah the son of Jether, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to your wisdom, and let not his gray head go down to the grave in peace. Right, don't you let him die. Don't you let him die. You kill him. Now this was, this was David's general, right? He said, don't you let him die, Solomon. Slow-mo, you kill him. Go ahead and read, brother. Second Kings, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 7. But show kindness unto the sons of Basili, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at your table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, your brother. And behold, you have with you Shimei, the son of Gerar, a Benjamite of Bahurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by Yahweh, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now therefore hold him not guiltless, for you are a wise man and know what you ought to do unto him. But his gray head bring you down to the grave with blood. Right, you kill him too now. Go ahead, brother. Get rid of all these enemies you got. Get rid of them. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and 33 years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Slomo upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established great. Okay, my brother, chapter 3 and verse 5 through verse 15. Verse 5. In Gibeon, Yahweh appeared to Slomo in a dream by night, and Elohim said, Ask what I shall give you. Hmm. And Slomo said, You have shown unto your servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before you in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you, and you have kept from him this kept for him this great kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Yahweh, my Elohim, you have made your servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. Hmm. And your servant is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. 
Give therefore your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, your so great a people? Hmm. And the speech pleased Yahweh that Slomo had asked this thing. And El said unto Slomo, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked for yourself long life, neither have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern judgment, behold, I have done according to your words. Lo, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like you before you, neither after you shall any arise like unto you. Including Messiah. The Messiah didn't say there was one that was wiser than Solomon here. Mm -hmm. He said there was one that was greater than Solomon was here. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 13. And I have also given you that which you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto you all your days. Hmm. And if you will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David did walk, then will I lengthen your days. And Slomo awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast. <coughs> To all his servants. Okay, my brother, chapter 5 and verse 1 through chapter 6 and verse 14. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants unto Slomo, for he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. And Slomo sent to Hiram, saying, Thou knowest how that David my father could not build a house unto the name of Yahweh his Elohim. For the wars which were about him on every side, until Yahweh put them under the soles of his feet. Mm -hmm. But now Yahweh my Elohim have given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurring. And behold, I purpose to build a house unto the name of Yahweh my Elohim, as Yahweh spake unto David my father, saying, Your son, whom I will set upon your throne in your room, he shall build a house unto my name. Now therefore command you that they hew me cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servants shall be with your servants, and unto you will I give high for my servants according to all that you shall appoint. But you know that there is not among us any that can skill to hew timber like unto the Sidonians. And it came to pass when Hiram heard the words of Slomo that he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be Yahweh this day which have given unto David a wise son over this great people. And Hiram sent to Slomo saying, I have considered the things which you have sent to me for, and I will do all your desire concerning timber of cedar and concerning timber of fir. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will com convey them by sea in floats unto the place that you shall appoint me, and will cause them to be discharged there, and you shall receive them. And you shall accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. So Hiram gave Slomo cedar trees and fir trees according to all his desire. And Slomo gave Hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food to his household and 20 measures of pure oil. Thus gave Slomo to Hiram year by year. And Yahweh gave Slomo wisdom as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Slomo. And they two made a league together. And King Slomo raised a levy out of all Israel, and the levy was 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon, 2,000 a month by courses. A month they were in Lebanon, and two months at home. And Adoniram, I'm sorry, was over the levy. And Slomo had three score and ten thousand that bear burdens, and four score thousand hewers in the mountains, 
beside the chief of slow mo's officers, which were over the work, 3,300, which ruled over the people that wrought in the work. Hmm. And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. And slow mo's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them and the stone squarers. So they prepared timber and stones to build the house. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel would come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of slow mo's reign over Israel, in the month Sip, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of Yahweh. Verse 11. And the word of Yahweh came to slow mo saying, Concerning this house which you are in building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with you, which I spake unto David your father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So slow mo built the house and finished it. And we also know that slow mo did more than build the house and finish it. Slow mo did a whole lot of things that turned the true and living God against them. And because of those things, uh, the kingdom was taken from uh, slow mo. Chapter 9 and verse 1 through verse 9. Verse 1, and it came to pass when Slomo had finished the building of the house of Yahweh and the king's house and all Slomo's desire, which he was pleased to do, that Yahweh appeared to Slomo the second time as he had appeared unto him in Gibeon. And Yahweh said unto Slomo, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have hallowed this house which you have built to put my name there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if you will walk before me, as David your father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David your father, saying, There shall not fail you a man upon the throne of Israel. But if you shall at all turn from following me, you are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other Elohims and worship them. Then, Come she. Verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David your father, saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if you shall at all turn from following me, you are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other Elohims and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given you them. You see what he said? You see what he told that? What he charged Solomon with? He told Solomon, say, but if you shall at all turn from following me, you are your children, and you will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then would I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel should be a proverb and a byword among all the people. If you don't do it, you got to do Solomon. See, a lot of people like to say, well, this thing fell on Manessas. No, it didn't. It fell on Solomon. See, Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 8. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passes by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall say, why have Yahweh done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook Yahweh, their Elohim, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other Elohims, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore have Yahweh brought upon them all this evil. Okay, my brother, chapter 11 and 1 through 12, 19. Verse 
Verse 1. But King Slomo loved many strange women, together with the daughter Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their Elohim. Right. He told them many ways. He say, don't let your cattle mingle with a uh, uh, diverse kind. Don't so mingle seed together. Right. Letting them know, keep your seed pure. Right. But what did King Solomon do? King Solomon decided, well, I like that woman over there. And I like that woman over there. I mean, her husband got all of this power and this might and everything. And he can do this for me. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. Slomo cleaved unto these in love. Hmm. Verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Slomo was old that his wives turned away his heart after other Elohims, and his heart was not perfect with Yahweh his Elohim, as was the heart of David his father. For Slomo went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites, and Slomo did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and went not fully after Yahweh, as did David his father. And we have to ask ourselves a question. Do we go fully after the things that Yahweh has given us to go after, or do we go after what we want to go after, and the rest of the stuff, we just don't even deal with that? Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Then did Slomo build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Melech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their Elohims. And Yahweh was angry with Slomo, because his heart was turned from Yahweh Elohim of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Had appeared unto him twice. Twice, and this brother still turned away. Go ahead and read it, brother. And had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other Elohims. But he kept not that which Yahweh commanded. He didn't told him don't commit sin. He told him don't go after other gods, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Wherefore Yahweh said unto Slomo, For as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you. I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. Notwithstanding in your days, I will not do it for David, your father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of your son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And Yahweh stirred up an adversary unto Slomo, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the king's seed in Edom. Verse 26, brother. And Yeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zerita, Slomo's servant, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Slomo built Milo, Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And the man Yeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Slomo seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Yosef. Hmm. And it came to pass at that time when Yeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahiah the Shilomite found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were along in the field. And Ahia caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take you ten pieces. For thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Slomo and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Melchon, the Elohim of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, 
But I will make him prince all the days of his life for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto you, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take you, and you shall reign according to all that your soul desireth, and shall be king over Israel. And it shall be, if you will hearken unto all that I command you, to, and will walk in my ways, and do that right, and do that is right in my sight to keep my statutes and my commandments, as I be my servant did, that I will be with you and be you a sure house as I built for David and will give Yisrael unto you. This is what I like about the true and living God. When you make covenants with the true and living God, he sent his angels to tell you what your deal is so you won't have to even worry about that stuff no more. You'll know where you're getting your instructions from. Go ahead and read, brother. Now, this one tribe, now we know it is the tribe. Amen. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Levi is the priest. Uh, the holy temple would be built in Zion, was built in Zion, and the Levites uh, was the inheritors of all the suburbs around uh, uh, about Zion. That's why they weren't given a portion. See, Yahweh was their portion. So Levi was already in the city, and uh, he gave them Benjamin. That's why when you get down to the New Testament and the, and, and you find out the, the the main bulk of the tribe that was brought over here as slaves was Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. That's why our folks sang, "Tis that old ship of Zion." Uh, Verse 39. And I will for this afflict the seed of diabetes, but not forever. And slope, verse 40, slow most sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt unto the death of Slomo. Right. Yahweh had him run down there. So this brother here, he'd be out of this brother's way, and this brother wouldn't kill him because he had already set him up as king, and he wanted Slomo to go ahead and live his days out and not have to send the death angel to kill Solomon for messing with this boy. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 41. And the rest of the acts of Slomo and all that he did and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Slomo? And the time that Slomo reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Slomo slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Mm -hmm. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel would come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Slomo, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make you the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve you. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Slomo his father while he yet lived, and said, How do you advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto Rehoboam, saying, If you will be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, What counsel give you? They didn't have no boys. <laughs> they didn't have no boys. He went to who he was supposed to uh, go to. The, the scripture always said, Ask your elders and they'll show you. See? gather me the elders and bring them over here. Take the elders and do that, right? But what happened? These young folks, these young folks don't want to deal with that. You know what they say? Man, the elders old and foggy. This is a new day. We got a new thing we got to do, right? Go on and read, brother. Verse 8. Verse 9. And he said unto them, What counsel give you that we may answer this people? Who have spoken to me, saying, 
make the yoke which your father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shall you speak unto this people that spoke unto you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make you it lighter unto us. Thus shall you say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. They wanted power. See? The young folks want to get in power now. See? Right. Right. And when the young folks got in power, the kingdom kept going right on down the hill. Went down faster. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father have chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yahweh, that he might perform his saying which Yahweh spake to Ahiah the Shilamite, Unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebo. You see what happened? Do you see what happened? The cause wasn't from the people. Yahweh made the folks do what he wanted them to do. You know why? He was tearing down the kingdom. So he picked and chewed. He raised up who he wanted to to have the kingdom torn down. Just like he raised up who he wanted to to set up the kingdom. But see, the young folk found a fault in that. See? Go ahead and read, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Yehuda, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Right. He sent the men out to collect this levy he had, he had put on him, right? And they killed the ones that were sent, and this brother got scared and got on his chariot and went to Jerusalem, didn't he? Go ahead, brother. Verse 19. So Yisrael rebelled against the house of David until this day. Amen and amen. Now begins the fall of our nation. After the division, uh, after the division, the history of our fathers is riddled with rebellions, deceit, treachery, and murder. But the main thing was paganism. The fathers knew they were Yahweh's chosen, but the people in mass didn't know why they were called. But this was because of the veil of rebellion uh, uh, had caused them not to see that Yahweh is a spirit and they saw the things only the natural man could see. Uh, uh, Ezekiel 8 and verse 1 through chapter 11 and verse 13. Let's see what was said to these not, not here. Ezekiel uh, 8 and verse 1. Hmm? that the elders and uh, the prophets at the time they had some understanding of the word knowing that a good leader was actually a servant because the council that was given was known that you serve the people and in return they would serve you mm -hmm. but he didn't want to serve the people he mm -hmm. wanted to just um, the his, his like like men like most men today their definition of rulership is just give the orders and that's it but when it comes to uh, serving the people and being able to aid the people when it's time for them to ask for something like for instance Moshe every time the children of Israel ask for something of Moshe he didn't tell them they, they just couldn't have anything or they couldn't do that he went and his work was to inquire of the God of Israel so in some cases people. in some cases in other cases he just didn't pay no attention to the children of Israel because he knew what it was all about and so that that that's good in some cases, brother. You can serve the people, 
Well, there are different ways of serving. There are different ways of serving, and a man has to choose the way that he chooses to serve. Me, myself, I'm a teacher. That's what I do. Anything else, that's what we got departments to do. See? I said, well, okay. It's just like when our next season come up. I got people to come to me and say, what you want us to do next season? I said, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, right? I'm through with that. You know who handled that from then on? Whoever it is out there in that department, they handle that. They get that thing together. So the thing still remains, brother, uh, uh, anything that you deal with, you're going to have to have rulers in it. And anytime you have rulers in, in things, people are never going to, it's going to be many people that's going to never like the things that the rulers do. You see, but what I do is this. I look at what the people are saying. I listen to all their complaints, but then I turn around and I watch and see what the servant's doing. See, and that's the way I balance that thing off, brother. That's the way I understand who's doing uh, Yahweh a service because they Yahweh has put it in their heart to do it, and who's not doing Yahweh a service because they have put it in, in their heart th that they don't like the way things are being done. See, that's the way I deal with it, brother. You have to balance that thing off. You can't just, you can't just, you have to look at both sides of that situation, even with Moses, you had to look at both sides of him. Moshe was doing what Yahweh said do, and the people wanted to do what the people wanted to do. But one thing you can say, whatever Yahweh asked them for while they, they was out there in that wilderness, regardless of what they did, Yahweh gave it to them, didn't he? And but when things came up that somebody had to bear the blame, that somebody had to stand in the breach, how many of them other folks could stand in that breach? Okay. Uh Read, brother. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Yehuda sat before me, that the hand of the Adonai Elohim fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as, of the, as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins, even downward fire. And from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. Mm -hmm. And behold, the glory of the Elohim of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Now, ask yourself a question. Why was the spirit of jealousy in there? Hmm? For division. It caused division among the because people. Because of the division that had already been caused. And the, and the spirit of jealousy therefore was there to do one thing, to destroy Israel. Hmm. You, you know, we see even Ezekiel had locks, and uh, I was at uh, Emory yesterday, as I do monthly, for a workshop, and one brother who claimed to have been a Rastafarian made the statement that it was the Rastafarian who introduced uh, people to locks. I saw, the difference between locks and dreadlocks. Yeah, I told him. I said, I beg, I beg the difference. I said, now, my people, the Hebrew Israelite, I said, have always worn locks. I said, even Samson had locks. I said, now maybe your people might have been the one who introduced them to dreadlocks. But I said, we have long worn locks. Right, right. You're absolutely right. Well, you had locks all the way back. Mm -hmm. See, you the braid hair. You braid, you lock. You braid, you lock. Okay. 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 It's the same thing, us being married to Elohim. This spirit of jealousy is the same thing that applies to a man and his wife then, right? Of course. Same thing in the law, right? Of course. The spirit of jealousy is always there, brother. When sin abounds, the spirit of jealousy is always there. But what is it there for? Destruction. Okay. Okay. But the image of jealousy was always placed there for one purpose, to destroy Israel. Let me read. Verse 4. And behold, the glory of the Elohim of Yisrael was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now toward the way of the north. So I lifted up mine eyes toward the way, the way toward the north, 
And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Mm-hmm. He said, furthermore unto me, Son of man, do you see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go fall from my sanctuary. But turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Yehazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Hmm. Then said he unto me, Son of man, have you seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, Yahweh seeth us not. The Adonai have forsaken the earth. Right, he ain't right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and say what I want to say. He ain't standing right here. Right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. And behold, that set women weeping from for Tammuz. Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn you yet again, and you shall see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. And they worshipped the sun. Inside the place, inside the sanctuary. Not only were they down all in, 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 in the bottom of the temple, in the foundation of the temple, they was all up in the sanctuary. Why? Because Yahweh had forsaken them. So, go ahead and read, you, brother. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Yehuda that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Hmm. Therefore, I also will deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Hmm. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Mm -hmm. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen and with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Now these were angels. We know that, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And the glory of the Elohim of Israel was gone up from the chair, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. Okay, so he was sitting on the, on, 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 on the Ark of the Covenant, right? So it raised up, and it went over to the threshold of the house, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Save this remnant. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, Go you after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Hmm. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, 
and fill the courts with the slain. Go you forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Adonai Elohim, will you destroy all the residue of Israel in your pouring out of your fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Yehuda is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Adonai have forsaken the earth, and Yahweh saith not. Mm -hmm. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And right, and this is what this is what I like about Yahweh. He always come to you and tell you what the deal is so you won't make no mistake about what's going on. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have commanded me. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was about was above the head of the cherubims that appeared over them, as it were, sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, said, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill your hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of Yahweh went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of Yahweh's glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the almighty Elohim when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubims, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took the elf and put it into the hand of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. Verse 15, brother. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kiba. Right. They called it a living creature, but the Muslims called it a spaceship. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 16. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of Yahweh departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them, and every one stood at the door of the east gate of Yahweh's house, and the glory of the Elohim of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the Elohim of Israel by the river of Kibar, and I knew that they were the cherubims. Mm -hmm. Everyone had four faces apiece, and everyone four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Kibar, their appearances, and themselves. They went everyone straight forward. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of Yahweh's house, which looketh eastward. And behold, at the door of the gate, twenty-five men, among whom I saw Yazaniah, the son of Asir, and Pelathiah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that, that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city, which say, it is not near. Let us build houses. 
This city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Mm -hmm. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the spirit of the Adonai fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus says Yahweh. Thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore, thus says the Adonai Elohim, Your slain, whom you have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Mm -hmm. You have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, says the Adonai Elohim. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. You shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall you be the flesh in the midst thereof, but I will judge you in the border of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahweh, for you have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manner of the heathen that are round about you. Hmm. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatai, the, the son of Benaiah, died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Adonai Elohim, will you make a full end of the remnant of Yisrael? Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, Son of man, your brethren, even your brethren, the men of your kindred and all the house of Yisrael holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from Yahweh. Unto us is this name given in possession. Mm -hmm. Therefore say, thus says the Adonai Elohim, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Verse 32, brother. Verse 22, I'm sorry. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the Elohim of Yisrael was over them above. On his throne, right? His throne was the Ark of the Covenant, right? Well, what they talking about they got over there in Ethiopia? Don't you know if they had, that would be the world's most significant and greatest find. Them crackers would have went over there and burned no. up the whole country of Africa right. to get that covenant, that Ark. And they're going to tell me, one man over there, in a little building, and he got the ark in there, and ain't nobody, ain't nobody never seen it but the people that, to be over it, the one man to be over it all the time, right? Don't y'all know them crackers would have went and took that stuff? Okay. But they what they took everything else, didn't they? Got all of our stuff in the Museum of Natural History in, 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 in Great Britain, in New York City, all over there. They got all of our stuff and all of our holy things in their temple. Everything but the ark of the covenant. Why? Because it was Yahweh's throne. And people talk about it, but when you get in Revelation 11, the Ark of the Covenant was seen in heaven, wasn't it? But, Elder, we read about it. We read, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. We read about what happened to the people that had the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. They had to get rid of it, didn't Of course. They? So it's sitting over there peaceably now, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, brother. I know. Go ahead and finish up, brother. We're supposed to go to 11 through 13. No, did you finish that up? Yes, sir. And we okay. read one verse. Okay. Okay. Seeing that our fathers became alienated from Yahweh's will, the Spirit forsook Zion, and the curses of Deuteronomy 28 began to destroy, and the holy prophets hew our fathers down according to uh, the will of Yahweh. Although the Elohim of our fathers arose daily and sent them his warnings, the vast majority of the kings, the priests, and the common people, all except a mere remnant, walk in the uncontrolled imagination of their own perverse heart. Regardless to their, their many trials and tribulations, regardless to the many woes Lucifer was allowed to execute upon Israel, the fathers uh, chosen were so holy and so self-righteous and independent, they murdered kings, slew priests and prophets, and found all sorts of reasons or excuses 
to reject the words of those sent by the spirit of Yahweh. And for this, the angel of Yahweh did not pardon their sin. So now, so, so now that the spirit has, has abandoned Zion unknown to our, our people who still, uh, serve the temple. Now that the, that the hedge was being removed, Lucifer is prepared to destroy Judah's stronghold and to desecrate the holy of holies. O.C. chapter 10 and verse 1 through chapter 11 and verse 7. Hosea chapter 10 and verse 1 through chapter 11 and verse 7. Yahweh has always rose up early and sent, and sent uh, servants to his people. But you know what? The people just didn't like the servants. They wanted to do, they always found fault in the servants. Yahweh found a fault in them too, but he sent them, didn't he? Okay. Uh, uh, O.C. 10, and pick that up at verse 1 through chapter 11 and verse 7, my brother. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he have increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spar their images. For now they shall say, We have no king, because we fear not Yahweh. What then shall a king do to us? Hmm. They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as a hemlock in the furrows of the field. This is why I tell folks, before y'all take that baptism, you need to put something on your mind between you and your God and let your God know what you're going to do. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 5. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoice on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jareth. Hmm. Ephraim shall receive shame, and Yisrael shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Yisrael, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars. And they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. O Israel, you have sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they stood. The battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them, when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is as an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I pass over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Yehuda shall plow, and Jacob shall break his claws. Hmm. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek Yahweh till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Sow to yourself righteousness. Reap in mercy, break up that unused ground that you haven't used, right? For it is time to seek Yahweh till he come and rain righteousness upon you. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 13. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you did trust in your way and the multitude of your mighty men. <laughs> Therefore shall a tumult arise among your people, and all your fortresses shall be spoiled, as Shaman spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall Beth do unto you because of your great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Baalim and burn incense to graven images. Hmm. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. You see what he said? He said, I taught Ephraim to go, taking them by the arm, right? 
He said, I taught Ephraim to worship him, uh, idols, mm-hmm. taking them by the arm. But they didn't know that I was going to heal them. See, go ahead, brother. Verse 4. I drew them with cords of a man with bands of love, and I was to them as they that take off the yoke off their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king, because they refuse to return. Mm-hmm. And the sword shall abide on his cities, and shall consume his branches, and devour them, because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they call them to the Most High, none at all will exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Edmund, how shall I set thee at Seboam? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentance are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. For I am Elohim and not man, the Holy One in the midst of you. And I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after Yahweh. He shall roar like a lion. Then he shall roar, when he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria, and I will place them in their houses, says Yahweh. I'll read the next verse, brother. Oh, I went too far then. No, just, yeah, that's all right. Go ahead and okay. read the next verse. Verse 12. Ephraim compasses me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit, but Yehuda yet ruled with Elohim and is faithful with the saints. Okay, my brother. 2 Kings uh, 17, and let's pick that up at verse 1 through verse 41. Let's go and see what happened. 2 Kings, 2 Kings 17, and verse 1 through verse 41. Let's go and see what happened. And the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Yehuda, began Oshiel, the son of Elon, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Hmm. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Oshiel became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Oshiel. For he had sent messengers to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Right. He's decided he gonna, he's not going to pay this tribute. He's going to go and hire the king of uh, Egypt to come up and help him. But you see what happened? The king of Assyria still came up and shut him up and bound him up in the prison. But go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 5. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. And the ninth year of Oshia, the king of Assyria, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the city, by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Russians. So he, he, they, they, they scattered them over that Middle East and all up in, in, in Europe and Asia, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahweh their Elohim, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and had feared other Elohims, and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom Yahweh cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against Yahweh their Elohim, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree, and there they burned incense in all the high places, as did the heathen 
whom Yahweh carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke Yahweh to anger. For they serve idols whereof Yahweh has said unto them, You shall not do this thing. Yet Yahweh testified against Israel and against Yehuda by all the prophets and by all the seals, saying, Turn you from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I command your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in Yahweh their Elohim. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom Yahweh had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of Yahweh their Elohim and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. Therefore Yahweh was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Yehuda only. Also, Yehuda kept not the commandments of Yahweh their Elohim, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. They saw what happened to Israel. They saw what happened to Samaria. And you see what they did? They went and did the same thing, didn't they? Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 20. And Yahweh rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hands of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following Yahweh and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until Yahweh removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants. Verse 22. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until Yahweh removed Israel out of his sight, as he has said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Mm -hmm. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the manner of the Elohim of the land. Therefore he have sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the Elohim of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry there one of the priests whom you brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the Elohim of the land. Mm -hmm. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear Yahweh. Howbeit every nation made Elohims of their own, and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukoth Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burned their children in the fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the Elohims of Sepharvaim. Hmm. So they feared Yahweh, and made unto themselves of the lords of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. 
They feared Yahweh and served their own Elohim mm. after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Until this day, they do after the form of manners. They fear not Yahweh, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and commandment which <coughs> Yahweh commanded the children of Yaakov, whom he named Israel, with whom Yahweh had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other Elohims, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But Yahweh, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you worship, and to him shall you do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do forevermore, and you shall not fear other Elohims. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you fear other Elohims. But Yahweh, your Elohim, you shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared Yahweh and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Amen. But they got kicked out of the land for dealing with that specific situation. Now let's go into Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1 through chapter 39 and verse 8. Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 1 through chapter 39 and verse 8. Let's go and deal with the house of Judah. We've already dealt with the house of Israel. Now let's go and deal with the house of Judah. Of the nations just to keep the pilgrims you know, like, 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 against all the defense cities of Yehuda, and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rapshakeh from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army, and he stood by the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hekiah's son, which was over the house, and Shepherd of the scribe, and Yoah, Asaph's son, the recorder. And Rapshakeh said unto them, Say you now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein you trust? Hmm. I say, say a few, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now of whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Mm -hmm. Lo, you trust in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in Yahweh, our Elohim. Is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah have taken away and said to, Yeru to Yehuda and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar? Now therefore give pledges, I pray you, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses if you be able on your part to set riders upon them. <laughs> How then will you turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? And am I come up without Yahweh against this land to destroy it? Yahweh said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim and Shebna and Yoab unto Rapshakeh, Speak, I pray you, unto your servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and speak not to us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rapshakeh said, Have my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words? Have he not sent me to the men that sit upon the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? 
Then Rapshaker stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear you the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make an, agree make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me, and eat you every one of his vine and every one of his fig tree, and drink you every one the waters of his own system, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Be well, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, Yahweh will deliver us. Have any of the Elohims of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the Elohims of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the Elohims of Sephavim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the Elohims of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand, that Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, that was over the household, and Shepna the scribe, and Yah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rapshakeh. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of Yahweh. That's what he was supposed to do. See, regardless to what folks said, regardless to what come up, what he was supposed to do was go in the morning and go in and inquire of his God of it. See, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 2. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shepna the scribe and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah, he says, the prophet of the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and a rebuke and a blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Hmm. It may be Yahweh, your Elohim, will hear the words of Rapshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, have sent to reproach the living Elohim, and will reprove the words which Yahweh, your Elohim, have heard. Wherefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Amen. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Esaias, and Esaias said unto them, Thus shall you say unto your master, Thus says Yahweh, Be not afraid of the words that you have heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rapshaker returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And he heard say concerning Taharka, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war with you. And when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Yehuda, saying, Let not your Elohim, in whom you trust, deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shall you be delivered? Have the Elohims of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and Resep, and the children of Edom, which are in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arphad, and the king of the city of Sephavim, Hena and Ava? And Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers, and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of Yahweh and spread it before Yahweh. Went up to the house. Things come up. Take it. Spread it on Yahweh's office. And say, now what you going to do about this? Huh? This is your business. You handle it. See. 
Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. And Hezekiah prayed unto Yahweh, saying, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel that dwelleth between the cherubims, you are that are the Elohim, even you alone, of all the nations of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, O Yahweh, and see. And hear all the words of Shennacherib, which have sent to reproach the living Elohim. Of a truth, Yahweh, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries, and have cast their Elohims into the fire. For they were no Elohims, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Yahweh, our Elohim, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahweh, even you only. Then he says, the son of Amos sent unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Whereas you have prayed to me against Shennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word which Yahweh have spoke concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Yehuda, have despised you and laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem have shaken her head at you. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? And against whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on, eye, on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants have you reproached your Reproach the Adonai, and have said, By the multitude of my chariots am I come up to the height of the mountains to the size of Lebanon. And I will cut down the tall cedars thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the height of his border, and the forest of his carmel. I have digged and drank water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the besieged places. Have you not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that you should be to lay waste defense cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetop, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know your abode, and your going out, and your coming in, and your rage against me. Because you rage against me, and your tumult has come up into mine ears, therefore will I put my hook into your nose, and my bridle into your lips, and I will turn you back by the way by which you came. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which bringeth of the same, and in the third year sow you and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Yehuda shall take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of the out of Mount Zion. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts shall do this. Therefore thus says Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria. He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast the bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, says Yahweh. For I will defend this city, to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of Yahweh went forth, and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Shennacherib, king of, of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his Elohim, that Adremelech and Shereza, his son, smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esau, Hadan, his son, reigned in his stead. Okay, now Hezekiah got sick, and he was sick unto death. And he went and cried to Yahweh because he didn't want to die. And Yahweh told him he was going to add 15 years to his life. So he added 15 years to his life, 
uh, after Hezekiah had played, prayed uh, uh, to Yahweh. Now, let's go and pick this up, my brother, and uh, see what happened. Chapter 39, and read verse 1 through verse 8. Yes, sir. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered. And Hezekiah was glad of them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. Hmm. Then came he says the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence they came unto you? And Hezekiah said, They'll come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There's nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Hmm. Then said he says to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Yahweh of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon, nothing shall be left, says Yahweh. And of your sons that shall issue from you, which you shall beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to himself, Good is the word of Yahweh which you have spoken. He said, moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in, in my day. day. Okay, but well that's going to come up on them, but there's going to be peace and truth in my day. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah. Let's pick up uh, uh, the, the, the uh, fulfilling of this prophecy. Uh, well, let's pick up what Jeremiah had to say in chapter Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1 through verse 37. Let's see what Jeremiah went and told us in the upper head. Uh, 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 Jeremiah uh, chapter, no, that's not where I want to go, brother. I'm going to go, yeah, Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 1 through chapter 27 and verse 22. Yeremiah chapter 25 and verse 1 through chapter 27 and verse 22. The word that came to Yeremiah concerning all the people of Yehuda in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the which Yeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Yehuda and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Yehuda, even unto this day, that is, the twenty-third year, that the word of Yahweh have come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. And Yahweh have sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, turn you again now, everyone, from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that Yahweh have given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other Elohim to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet you have not hearkened unto me, says Yahweh, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says Yahweh, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them, and will make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolation. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon Seventy years. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says Yahweh, for their iniquity and the land of the called ends, and will make it perpetual desolations. 
And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Yahu have prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the work of their own hands. For thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this spirit at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I was to whom I send you to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup at Yahweh's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom Yahweh had sent me to wet Jerusalem and the cities of Yehuda and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment, a hissing and a curse as it is this day. Okay, my brother, now go over to uh, uh, verse uh, chapter 26 and verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, came this word from Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh, Stand in the court of Yahweh's house, and speak unto all the cities of Yehuda, which come to worship in Yahweh's house, all the words that I command you to speak unto them, diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken, and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. Mm -hmm. And you shall say unto them, Thus says Yahweh, <coughs> If you will not hearken to me to walk in my law which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but you have not hearkened, then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Yahu speaking these words in the house of Yahweh. Okay, chapter 27 and 1, my brother. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Yehuda, came this word unto Yahu from Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh to me, Make you bonds and yokes, and put them upon your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers, which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Yehuda. And command them to say unto their masters, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel. Thus shall you say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Hmm. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, says Yahweh, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Uh, verse uh, 12. I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Yehuda, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Mm -hmm. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, as Yahweh have spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them, says Yahweh, yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, and that you might perish, you and the prophets that prophesy unto you. Also I spake to the priests and to all the people, saying, Thus says Yahweh, Hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, 
Behold, the vessels of Yahweh's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you. Okay, my brother, uh, uh, skip down to uh, verse 21. Yea, thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel concerning the vessels that remain in the house of Yahweh and in the house of the king of Yehuda and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, says Yahweh. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. Okay, my brother. So we know that Nebuchadnezzar did come in, in into Jerusalem and destroy Jerusalem just as Yahweh said. And for the uh, for the next 70 years, the holy hill of Zion, the place Yahweh said his spirit would dwell, lay desolate. And all this misery and death and destruction, because Jake is determined to be captain of his own ship, master of his own fate, and chooser of his own destiny. But let's see what Isaiah had to say to him. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 through verse 13. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 through verse 13. See, Yahweh chose Israel, Yahweh married Israel, and Yahweh's love has always been for Israel. Israel just wanted to, Israel wanted to be Israel and do what Israel wanted to do regardless to what Yahweh said. Uh, uh, chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6, and pick that up at verse 1, bro. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Adonai sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hmm. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, Yahweh of hosts. Right, like you said, like Isaiah said, there's not one righteous, not, no, not one. Except Yahweh had left us a small remnant, we'd be destroyed, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. But go ahead. But Isaiah said, Woe is me! For I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. That's why different folks didn't want to listen to him. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse, didn't change Yahweh's word, though, did it? Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away. And your sin purged. Hmm. Also I heard the voice of the Adonai saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear you indeed, but understand not, And see you indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, And make their ears heavy, And shut their eyes. Least they see with their eyes, And hear with their ears, And understand with their heart, And convert and be healed. Then said I, Adonai, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and Yahweh have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten. As a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the seed shall be the substance thereof. So the holy seed, I'm sorry, shall be the substance thereof. So we know that the children of Israel had to return mm -hmm. back to the land to produce that holy seed. Uh, chapter 10, my brother, and verse 10 through verse 16. Chapter 7, I'm sorry, and verse 10 through verse 16. What did I say, 10? I'm sorry, chapter 7, brother. Chapter 7, verse 10 through verse 16. Moreover, Yahweh spake unto Ahaz, saying, Ask the sign of Yahweh your Elohim. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt Yahweh. Hmm. 
And he said, Hear you now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my Elohim also? Right. Do y'all always sent me to tell you to ask, man, are you going to weary me? you going to weary Yahweh also? Go ahead. Verse 14. Therefore, the Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. But in honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you abhor shall be forsaken of both her kings. Okay, my brother, uh, 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 chapter 8 and 9 through chapter 9 and verse 8. Associate yourselves, O you people, and you shall be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you of far countries. Gird yourselves, and you shall, broke, you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. For Elohim is with us. Hmm. For Yahweh spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say you not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify Yahweh of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense, to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon Yahweh that hide his face from the house of Yaakov, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom Yahweh have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their Elohim, for the living, to the dead, to the law, and to the testimony? If they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Hmm. Nevertheless, the damnness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. Praise God. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They draw before you according to the joy and harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty El, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. The Adonai sent a word into Yaakov, and it have lighted upon Israel. This is the son that was promised to that, that was promised to David. It was would be a son. The reason for the birth, virgin birth was that so that the son would be born without the original sin. 
and that because when we get back and read the Passover law, the, the, the sacrifice that was offered for Passover, it had to be unblemished and it couldn't have any uh, 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 broken bones. And you need to, you, may, you might want to check the atonement sacrifice also and you'll see that these things truly fit the Messiah that was born uh, uh, many years later. Because the only part of the covenant fulfilled so far was that concerning being Elohim's nation in his land, the house of Yehuda had to return to bring forth uh, uh, that promised seed. Although a remnant of our fathers truly worship and serve because of Yahweh's love for his bride, Israel was greatly loved because of their special place and purpose in their time. Therefore, the remnant were forgiven, not having their sins imputed to them. Why? So that the purpose of Yahweh's works in the earth would be fulfilled according to his word and not according to their sins. But having knowledge of their own sins and then having the spirit visited upon them in, 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 in ways that were undeniable, the visitations from the unseen kingdom caused them to fear Yahweh and to show the same grace to whom the spirit chooses and not to themselves. A good idea was that with Samuel. I mean, it was the thing that took place between Samuel and Saul. We know Saul was, wasn't no good, but Samuel loved him even up, up to, uh, unto death, didn't he? Why? Because he was Yahweh's servant. 